Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome everybody to a random moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. Uh, Pastor, last night's message on the shield of faith was so practical. There was the, you addressed the, the, we the actual weapon that we use, how it's used for uh, short hand-to-hand -hand combat by using it as a weapon. And you also uh, shared how it's used to protect from the long range darts of the wicked one, the enemy. And, but I really liked when you, there was a picture that was shown when all these shields were together, yeah. huddled together. Yeah. And, it, and it was, you were talking about the teamwork, the unity, mm -hmm. and how the enemy will use those wicked darts or those darts from the wicked one to sow discord among the brethren yeah. or to mm -hmm. cause divisions and very practical. Uh, as you're sharing out of Ephesians chapter 6, I want to go down that same thread uh, and the importance, because you mentioned it last night in, in the study, being in God's Word, mm. being in, in, in fellowship, uh, being part of, uh, being in ministry in terms of being with other brothers and sisters. Uh, today I wanted to speak a little bit along that same line uh, on spiritual warfare and the importance of being in God's Word, being in prayer. You know, in Second Kings chapter six, it uh, it tells about the Syrian king and a Syrian army surrounding and encamping Elisha and Dothan, and the servant comes out, Elisha's servant, and says, "Alas, my master!" And he comes out, and he's he's afraid. Uh, and Elisha goes on to tell him that the army that God has is greater than what you see. And what I found interesting, and it lines up with what you're sharing last night that Elisha prays that his eyes would be open mm -hmm. and he was able to see after that. What's the importance, Pastor, of first intercessory prayer in spiritual warfare for others? But again, being in God's word and being in prayer you during know, these times. Part of, part of what Paul speaks about as he concludes the weapons of our warfare is he talks about prayer. He actually ends the weapons of our warfare after sharing about the helmet and all but he speaks of continuing in prayer. And so prayer is what, what uh, if you will, gives life to the rest of the pieces of armor that he supplied us with. The, the pieces of armor, as you see him, you know, the, uh, the uh, having your, your loins gird with truth or a breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with preparation of the gospel of peace, taking up the shield of faith and all you know, and the sword of the spirit and helmet of salvation, the various, well, every one of those things are actually tied together. And when you look at them, there are also qualities that um, describe Jesus Christ, you know, righteousness and, 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 and the peace and all of that. So you're putting on Christ is simply another way of saying you're putting on Christ in the battle. But also you have prayer because prayer is what energizes it's that dependence that you have on on god and his help because without him inter intervening you know all of your armament is really it's it's not going to have its full effect because we ask god lord would you would you would you be here in this battle with us because the battle ultimately is the lord's and so prayer is, is one of the keys to spiritual warfare because it's the Lord who moves on your behalf. He's the one who energizes the armor. He's the one who's clothed you in Christ, but he's the one who gives you the victory. And so I, 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 I know that if you don't enter in well prepared, if you don't receive your directions from, from headquarters, you know, and you do that through the word of God and prayer, and sometimes even through speaking to others of like mind who are mature in the faith and can say, this is what I've learned of the Lord. That all takes place in spiritual warfare. Um, if you're not praying, if you're not seeking the Lord, if you're not asking him to reveal to you what he would have you to do, and even in the, the story that you mentioned uh, where the request was open up my servant's eyes so you can see, so he can see that there are more with us than are against us. If if you don't have that spiritual eyesight, that reality that you may be in a skirmish, but in Christ, you're gonna win. You're victorious in the battle, in the campaign. You're, you're gonna be victorious and, and if you just hold fast. And even if it appears that you're losing, because sometimes it can appear that you're losing, um, 
No, the battle is the Lord's and God never loses. And so what happens is even the things that we feel that we may have failed in and perhaps we did, uh, we actually gain because we gained experience and we realize that was a shortcoming on my part, should have held fast, I, I let go is something I needed to learn. Kind of like when the apostle Peter's walking on water and notices the storm and conditions around him and he says, you know, well, the scripture says he began to sink and he cries out, Lord, save me. Well, well, that was a learning lesson. And though the, the men in the boat could have teased him about it later on, you know, the fact is they all remained in the boat, right? And he was the one who learned that lesson, right? And so that's how it works, John. It's, you know, I know that I'm wearing the armor. I know that there are certain pieces that I take up in, in battle. I'm, I'm supposed to pick up the the, the uh, shield in battle, you know, that's when you use it. So I have my feet and everything girded and ready, but in that individual battle, that spiritual war, that's when I learned to put this up and use it. And I, I, I like the, the idea of, uh, of uh, remembering that I'm not alone in the battle. I have my God uh, and it's all I really need, but I have his children with me who are united. And, and I really believe that, as I shared yesterday, that one of the big problems in the church today is this tendency to pit churches against churches. We've, we, we have had that for a long time where people will say, well, I'm part of your, the church that competes against you. I've even had that word used. I'm, we're part of your competition, you know, and that's, the church is not to, to compete against one another, we're to complement one another. One ministry may have a, a wonderful approach to a certain thing, and we have a different approach, but if the kingdom of God is being furthered, then why would we be in competition when in fact we have the same enemy and we ought to be united? And that's what I was trying to share last night. And it was a very, it was a good study, practical. And for those who have missed it, you can actually go to YouTube and uh, look up last night's study under under uh, Pastor David's teachings in Ephesians as you've been going through this uh, series on spiritual weapons. Yep. You know, this servant that went out there saw things through the eyes of the flesh. Elijah were able to see things through the eyes of the spirit. Yeah, the Lord, because he said, may the Lord open his eyes. The servant would have remained in the flesh had God not, had God not opened his eyes. So the request is, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And that's what we do because some people can get into the flesh and want to do spiritual warfare in the flesh and it's always going to be unsuccessful. It has to be the Lord energizing his armor, working through his, his warrior and ultimately gaining the victory. I like that. The Lord is the one that energizes the armor. I think sometimes we think it's us. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not, not us. It. No. Well, Pastor, thank you so much for sharing that. I thought, again, what a practical study that was last night. We, we were able to celebrate in communion. Yeah. And so what a special time it was. I want to invite you guys to come out and join us on Sunday morning at 830 and 1045 and invite your friends. It's, uh, you know, the, uh, the COVID thing's over. So, yeah, that, that's what the president said, right? So now we can come back to church. Should, should have a long time ago right. because it's been over for a long time. <laughs> So, yeah, But we want to invite you guys to come out. And a reminder, we, we want to keep this in front of you. We have our Israel trip coming up in March. Uh, you can register online and, and got a quite a number of people going. We've got a good there. amount. I'm and real blessed so, by uh, that. And so Pastor David and Marie would love for you guys to come out yes. and join the team. And what a great opportunity is to, to walk the land where, where Christ is. Amen. Goes. Thank you, Pastor David. Thank you guys for tuning in. And God bless you. Right.